Hello, everybody, and welcome to this presentation on yeah, quickly deploying explainable AI dashboards. Uh, my name is Uge Dijk. I work at the UWV, uh, which is a Dutch government agency which is responsible for overseeing and administering a large part of the Dutch uh, welfare state. Uh, I work there as, as a data scientist, and uh, uh, I'm working there to get uh, machine learning uh, models into production in order to help uh, our citizens get better services. Uh, and often, like I ran into this issue that a lot of people uh, are often afraid of machine learning models of algorithms of mo uh, 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 of models and what they would do. And so it'd be, it was very useful to be able to explain uh, to people exactly what these models were doing. Uh, and in order to make this easier, I basically developed this a Python package called Explainer Dashboard, uh, which makes it really easy to build your own explainable AI dashboards uh, in order to explain exactly what your machine learning models are doing. So that's what I'll be presenting today. Uh, just a quick outline for today. So I'm going to start with a quick demo to really show you how easy it is to build this stuff, basically uh, two lines of code. Uh, and then I'm going to give you a, a brief overview, okay, like how, what does this a default explainer dashboard look like. Um, uh, then I'm going to go into a bit of background, like why would you want such a, such a dashboard? How does it help you in your work as a data scientist working in, for example, a government agency or in a, a regulated industry or uh, really for in, in any organization where you need to explain exactly what your model is doing. Uh, and then finally, we're going to finish off with uh, showing how you can build your own uh, custom designed explainer dashboards, uh, which are um, specifically tailored for your own project model and situation. So let's start. All right, so let's build an explainer dashboard. Uh, so here I'm inside a, a Jupyter notebook. Uh, and of course, uh, first thing you need to do as a data scientist is fit a model. Uh, in order to fit a model, uh, we need some data. So let's get the, the training data and the testing data. Uh, and then fit a random forest model. Here we go. This is on the uh, the uh, Titanic data that we all know and love. Uh, okay, so now we have this model fitted, uh, and we'd like to explain exactly what it's doing uh, to maybe a manager, maybe a regulator or, or somebody else. Uh, so how to do this? Uh, so one simple way of doing it is uh, by launching an explainer dashboard. And in order to do that, uh, you first need to wrap your model inside an explainer instance. Uh, so that's as easy as this. Uh, so now we have an explainer instance uh, that's able to spit out all kinds of plots that allow you to investigate uh, the model. For example, if you want to look at the performance of this classification model, you can simply plot the, the uh, confusion matrix. Um, however, as you can see here, uh, uh, the explainer doesn't know uh, the, the names of the labels for the uh, positive class and the negative class. Uh, so this confusion matrix is maybe not as informative as it could be. Uh, so in order to remedy that, we can actually pass a whole bunch of and descriptions uh, to the explainer, uh, which means that the graph uh, will all look a bit better and be a bit more easy to explain uh, to a layperson. So here we added the label survived and not survived, which is the outcome of the classifier for a pathogenic data set. Okay, so now we have an explainer object which is able to spit out um, graphs and figures. Uh, so now we only need to build an explainer dashboard around this. Uh, that is able to use those graphs to make uh, an interactive dashboard. And basically, this is all you need to do. You simply wrap the explainer in an explainer dashboard instance and then run the instance. Uh, so here you go. We need to do a few calculations and we're up and running. Uh, so here we have it. So here we have a an explainer dashboard uh, with seven different tabs, all showing different aspects of your model and explaining different parts of your model. Um, so let's have a, have a look and go through all these seven tabs, so you have an idea like what kind of uh, uh, what kind of analysis you can do with this with such an with such an explainer dashboard. Uh, so the first thing is the feature importances. So basically showing like which are the input features, what goes into the model, and which is the most important. Uh, of course, uh, if you ever worked uh, with this data, you know that the agenda of the passenger is by far the most important variable for predicting the survival on the Titanic, uh, which makes sense because what because women and children uh, uh, went first on the on the 
uh, on the lifeboats. Uh, but also, what's for example is important is the passenger class, like the first class tickets, had a higher chance to survive. Age, uh, the older you were, the less likely you were to you were um, to survive, uh, etc. Uh, so these are the most important uh, features in this model. Um, then uh, you can investigate uh, the model performance. Of course, uh, when you have a model you want to put into production, you need to convince some people that it's actually uh, working and uh, uh, it has a, a, a high enough performance to be put into production. Um, so in this case, we get all your you know standard data science um, metrics, uh, but also there's a whole bunch of different plots showing the the. The performance of your of your model, uh, you can usually adjust a cutoff uh, 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 for the, these different graphs. So you have the area on area area on the curve graphs, uh, lift curves, etc. So it's all, all all basically different graphs and ways of telling a story around why your model is better than random, basically, and is good enough to be deployed into production. Okay, so this is explaining why the model is good enough to be used. Uh, then often when, when we talk about with, uh, when, when we talk about explaining models, what we really mean is, are you able to explain individual predictions? Are you able to explain to a customer, to a citizen, uh, like why the model had its prediction it did, and then why you acted based on that, uh, based on that prediction? Uh, the way you did. Um, so the way to uh, get that is simply by looking at this individual predictions tab, uh, where you can get for any kind of for any uh, a random passenger on a Titanic, or you can select one specifically uh, uh, if you wish. Uh, you can get the 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 prediction of the model and then a, a breakdown of every single feature in your model, how it affected the final prediction. Uh, so here we have Mr. Mm, uh, Lindell, uh, who had a probability of surviving according to the model of about 18.5% and who indeed did not survive, unfortunately. Uh, but then here we can have a breakdown of why the model thinks that Mr. Lindell had, 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 had such a poor chance of surviving. Uh, so the final prediction was 18.5%, uh, which was largely due to the fact that Mr. Lindell is a mister, uh, so he's male, and all males uh, uh, on board the tank were less likely to survive. Uh, the another important feature is, is that the um, deck uh, uh, he was staying at is unknown. Um, and finally, he is the a passenger class is third class, and third class passengers are also less likely to survive. And so you can add up all the features and all the different the contributions of each feature, which then finally add up to the final prediction of 18.5% uh, likelihood of survival. Uh, on the right here, you see a, a partial dependence plot where you can see like what if uh, uh, Mr. Lindell had been female, in which case, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, the likelihood of survival would have been 53%. So you can uh, you can have a look at, the, at these plots uh, for each fe input feature and you can see like if this feature were different, how would the prediction change. Uh, you can also do that for multiple features at the same time in the what if plot uh, uh, where you can basically change uh, all the features. Uh, let's have a look at Mr. Lindell again. Here he is. Uh, and let's say uh, uh, Mr. Lindell uh, uh, was not a Mr. Lindell but the Mrs. Lindell. How would it change? As we already saw, the change of survival goes up a lot. Let's see, we know that he was on, on the A deck. Um, let's say he wasn't third class, uh, but first class, uh, you can see that the odds of survival really go up a lot uh, 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 with each change that we make here. So this really allows you to explore uh, uh, for a, a specific a passenger or specific case or specific citizen, okay, how would the model have behaved if you were different uh, than you were or data on you was different than it is. Um, then another thing uh, when we talk about explaining a model is kind of uh, uh, overall how much does a feature impact the prediction. So uh, this is called feature dependence. Uh, so how does the uh, each feature uh, impact predictions uh, for all the possible values of that feature? Um, so here, for example, the, we have our most important variable. Um, uh, gender, and then we see the impact uh, uh, whether gender takes a female or male as the um, as a value, and of course we know that uh, if uh, gender is female, then you're more likely to survive. If male, uh, you're less likely to survive. Uh, but you can have a look at that, for example, also at fare. So here you can see that uh, the the higher the price of the ticket that you paid, the more likely you are to survive. Uh, you can even look at feature interactions. So you can basically break down the um, contribution of each feature into a, um, a direct effect and into an 
indirect effect. And then you can explore those indirect effects to kind of see what kind of feature interactions are in your model, especially if you use something like a random forest or decision tree that this usually allows for really rich interactions. So it's very interesting to kind of explore those. Uh, and finally, uh, uh, it's very nice uh, to basically show uh, people what the model actually is and what it's doing. So in this case, we fitted a random forest model, uh, which is simply a collection of different decision trees uh, of which you take the average. Um, so we can just take, uh, let's take our friend, Mr. Uh, Lindell again. Uh, and here you see every single decision tree in the random forest. Uh, which as we know now uh, added up to an average of about 18 and a half. Uh, but you can see like some decision trees are actually much more confident uh, and that Miss Lindell would survive. And some uh, decision trees were much less confident. Uh, but then of course, random forest simply takes the average. Uh, so, you, But you can only see the, the prediction of every single decision tree and actually see the tree itself. So if you click on any given tree, you see here the path through the uh, through, um, through the tree for Mr. Lindell. And you can actually also uh, draw out uh, the entire decision tree. Uh, so here, this is decision tree number 17. And you can see here the path that Mr. Lindell took down this tree. Uh, so this is a random forest. If, if we would have fitted a, 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 a XU boost model, we could have done the same thing uh, and also inspected every single uh, decision tree. However, then of course, uh, an XU boost model doesn't take the average of the trees, but it simply adds up all the individual trees where each individual trees only has a small um, a contribution to the final decision. Um, so that's it. That's an explainer dashboard. Uh, that's how easy uh, it is to build one and to uh, run one. Uh, so let's go back and uh, have a look at like why uh, would you need such a such a dashboard and how uh, and how may it make may may it make your work easier. Hopefully. Uh, so one of the reasons uh, why you would actually want such a tool is because machine learning is not just used uh, for um, optimizing clicks anymore. Actually, it gets used more and more inside the um, public sector and other regulated sectors such as finance. Uh, and so it's actually being used to make real decisions about real people, uh, uh, which might have a large impact on them. Um, and so it actually becomes more and more important to kind of understand what these models are doing uh, when, you, when they're being used in production. So one of the one of the tool, one of the ways that machine learning models get used uh, within government, the public sector, is for example in helping uh, recommending the right services to the right citizens. Uh, so this is very useful. Like you want to really target uh, your uh, your your benefits and your and your services to the right people who really need it. And so it can be really useful to use machine learning uh, uh, to do this. Uh, another, another way uh, uh, it's being used within government is to um, uh, prioritize cases. Like if you only have resources uh, to um, have to call 10% of your citizen to offer them a certain service, like which 10% uh, which are you going to call actively? Um, so it's very useful to know, okay, like which citizen would be, the, would be those who are most likely to need this help. So you can start targeting them, uh, them more efficiently. Uh, and finally, another use case is simply detecting fraud, like you're working with uh, taxpayer money. So it is important to be able to, to spot fraud and using uh, the uh, pattern detection uh, uh, methods of machine learning can really help in this. And so this is another area uh, where you can use machine learning, but also maybe it can be problematic here to use, uh, uh, to use algorithms. So often uh, you hear this, uh, this, this trope that these algorithms are just uh, basically black boxes uh, that will uh, spit out a, a prediction, but nobody really knows uh, what's going on inside them. I don't think it's really true anymore, uh, uh, but this is, this is one, of, one, of, one of the worries about using machine learning algorithms in a public sector. So we know that machine learning algorithms can be extremely powerful in finding and exploiting patterns. Uh, to predict outcomes, uh, which then naturally begs the question, uh, which pattern is it using? Is it the right patterns? And should be worried about like which patterns actually finding the data to make such accurate predictions. Um, uh, and this and the, and the fact that people feel that they don't know exactly what this model is doing, uh, then that generates fear. Uh, so these models, you know, if you have a random forest model or an actually boost model, can can that kind of consist of of dozens or even hundreds of decision trees may even be quite 
a large decision trees or deep decision trees uh, or if you build a neural net this might be millions or nowadays even billions of parameters uh, so then people fear okay what is this black box actually doing um, and so if you want to get these models into production it's very important that, we're able, that you're able to convince people uh, that what your model doing is innocuous uh, uh, you're not uh, uh, selecting people based on gender or or ethnic um, uh, ethnic background, uh, you're, you're using features that are reasonable to use uh, for your specific application. And so in order to build trust, uh, it really helps if you can open the black box and show people exactly what the model is doing and especially what it's not doing. Um, so in order, in order to build uh, trust, you need to basically be able to show uh, and explain uh, your model uh, to stakeholders at all levels. Uh, so in the, in the first place, of course, uh, you as a data scientist yourself have to be really confident that you understand what the model is doing because uh, that gives you the confidence and then to go out and say okay we should use this model and it's, it's using the right things in the right way uh, but then you need to be able to explain uh, to you to your manager what the model is doing uh, uh, and uh, it can be trusted then you need to explain probably to the manager managers and to the manager manager managers uh, uh, all the way up to the minister maybe or to the head of your agency um, so you need to uh, uh, find a way to convince those non-tactical people as well uh, then you might have um, uh, internal regulators inside uh, 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 your organization, uh, for example, the legal department, uh, which may need to be convinced that uh, what you're doing uh, follows all, all the all, all the um, national regulations. Uh, and if you have such regulations, such regulations, you might also have an external uh, regulator that is interested in exactly what you're doing uh, uh, with your models. And finally, of course, you have outsiders such as uh, citizens themselves who maybe have a right to an explanation if they get selected, for example, based, uh, uh, based upon a machine learning algorithm. Um, so all these people are not highly technical, but they still uh, uh, have a right to be explained what this model exactly does. Uh, and so for that, we need to open the black box. Um, so as I mentioned, for data scientists, I think this, this problem is mostly solved, like these models are actually not black boxes. Uh, nowadays, we have tools such as chef values, line values, partial dependence plots to really show what the, like what the model is doing and how different features impact predictions, even uh, individual predictions. Um, however, in order to kind of generate uh, these kind of plots uh, uh, and these kind of explanations, usually we have to be a data scientist who's fluent in, 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 in Python. Uh, 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 a Jupyter Notebook, uh, etc., in order to generate uh, uh, these explanations. Uh, so the next step is actually uh, um, using these tools and, uh, and building tools around it so it actually becomes also easy for uh, all the stakeholders around it, such as managers, internal regulators, external regulators, citizens, uh, to use these tools in an interactive and accessible way. So that is basically the goal of, of this mm, an explainer dashboard package. So to make it easy uh, for data scientists to build explainer dashboards. Hopefully you've seen that. It only took mm, uh, two lines of code. Uh, then it should be easy for stakeholders to use the dashboard without involvement of a data scientist. Like they could just click around. Um, and it should be easy for organizations to get these explainer dashboards uh, deployed. Uh, so whenever you have an external regulator interested in your model, it, it, uh, you can simply point them to your running a dashboard and they can go inspect the model uh, by themselves. Uh, so that's uh, that. those are basically, in a nutshell, the reasons why you would want to start explaining a dashboard. However, the dashboard that I just showed you had like seven tabs and a lot of different components and each component had a lot of different uh, toggles and drop downs. Uh, so that might be a bit overwhelming to simply show to your manager. Uh, so often, a lot of cases, you would want to build your own custom explainer dashboards. Uh, and luckily, uh, this is also quite easy to do uh, uh, using explainer dashboard package. So let's have a look how that is done. All right, so we want to build our own a custom explainer dashboard. Uh, so let's have a look at how that's done. Uh, so the thing that makes it easy, uh, relatively easy, is that all the components uh, that you've seen so far on this um, default explainer dashboard is actually an independent component. Uh, so you can actually reuse those in your own designs, in your own layouts, uh, and just put whatever text or other explanation uh, uh, around it. And you can uh, use whatever 
uh, components you think are most useful to your specific project. So for example, uh, uh, we saw this mm, uh, Shep mm, uh, dependence component, uh, which is a single component you can reuse in your inside your own uh, inside uh, your own dashboard. Um, so if you go into the documentation uh, uh, for explainer dashboard, uh, you can find the whole list of all the components uh, such as are there. So if you go look for here for the Shep dependence component, uh, this one here, uh, you can see that in order, uh, like when you build an instance of the Shep dependence component, you can uh, pass parameters to hide the different uh, toggles and drop downs of the, of the uh, of the uh, component, and you and you can also pass uh, default values. Uh, for the different uh, parameters, uh, and then you can simply uh, uh, put it in, in put it put it inside your own layout. Uh, however, first we're gonna have a look at how you can actually access these 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 explainer components inside a Jupyter notebook, uh, so, you, so you can actually play around with them interactively in your Jupyter notebook. So for that, we use inline explainer, uh, which also wraps around your explainer object, uh, and then we can simply call. Uh, the Shep uh, dependence <laughs> component here. So here you have example of the component actually running interactively inside Jep inside um, uh, Jupyter notebook. However, as we said, we have a lot of toggles here. Uh, some of them we might want to get rid of. Uh, so we can get rid of those uh, by simply saying hide those different toggles. Uh, so if we then run it again, we have a much simpler a component here with only two drop downs for uh, the feature and uh, uh, whatever feature you'd like to color uh, the feature by, uh, or not at all. Um, okay, so now we here we have a component. So let's see how we can build a layout around this component or multiple components. Uh, so we do that by defining a custom dashboard layout, uh, which we're going to do here. So first we need to we need, we need some import. So we need to import all the explainer components. Uh, and then we simply define a layout uh, as part of a class. Uh, uh, so we have a layout method that, that returns a layout, which, cons uh, which consists of um, uh, bootstrap elements and HTML elements, and then the actual components that we want to include. Uh, so in order to um, include a, a component in your layout, you first need to define it in the init. So here are the, the, the and three components we'd like to include, a precision component, a Shep summary component, and a Shep dependence component. And then we can define here like which toggles we would like to hide in the final layout. And then in order to define your layout, you simply define a number of rows and columns. And then in each column, you can define, for example, some, some headers um, or some text that you'd like to display. And uh, in the location in which you would like to see your component, you simply uh, insert the layout of your component. Uh, so we can do that for our precision component, for our Shep summary component, uh, and our uh, Shep dependence component. And then, and then on and then on the side of these components, we have some uh, some 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 textual explanation of this component. Uh, so this will be a very nice way to kind of get an overview of uh, the model. Uh, then if we also like uh, 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 to have another tab uh, 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 available to us, it basically shows individual predictions and explains those, uh, but only uh, keep it simple. So we only have one, one component uh, with the um, contributions uh, 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 of, of, of each prediction, like which features generated uh, 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 which part of the final prediction. Uh, and we want to, um, I visualize uh, the whole forest of individual trees inside the random forest. Um, then, and then this tab is even simpler in terms of layout. Uh, we simply have three rows. Each row has a single column, and in each column we simply have uh, 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 one of these one of these uh, one of these components with a header. Uh, so this is our second tab. And in order now to build this dashboard, um, it's very simple. We simply pass a list of custom tabs uh, to explain our dashboard and uh, it will run it for us. We can also pass a nice title we want to add on what we want to add on the top and you can even add themes. Uh, so in this case we use the flatly uh, theme which uh, I might look slightly nicer than the default theme uh, depending on your preference. Uh, so if we open this now uh, here we have it this is our new uh, custom dashboard. Um, 
especially built uh, for this model. Uh, so here you can see the 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 uh, precision plot with the text going with it, uh, the feature importances uh, either in aggregate or in detail uh, with the text going with it, and then here the feature impact plot. Uh, and our individual predictions can be seen here. So here you can select any of the of the passengers uh, uh, with the contributions to the prediction and every single tree in the random forest. Okay, so that is how easy it is uh, to build your own custom explainer dashboard. So I hope that will, uh, that will help you in building your own uh, dashboards that are simple, uh, clean, uh, and beautiful, and that will convince your management and your stakeholders uh, to go ahead with this beautiful model that you built uh, to help uh, the citizens in your own country. Okay, so that was it for me. Um, I hope this was useful. I hope you got, you got a flavor of like, uh, why it's important and useful to have, to have this kind of um, explainable AI dashboard and how easy it is to build one and also how easy it is to build your own custom version of it, uh, which will hopefully be easier to present uh, to, your, to your stakeholders. Uh, if you want to try it out uh, here below, uh, you can find all the information to install the package. And if you build something cool, uh, please let me know uh, uh, and, get, and get in touch. And otherwise, I wish you uh, uh, a lot of fun building your own explainer dashboards.